Hello and welcome back to Modded Minecraft Feed the Bees. Now, as you may have realized, we built some farms last episode, but they're not quite up and running. And this episode, we're going to cover what we need to cover to get them up and running. Now, it's been a long time coming and we've put off building auto crafters for a long time, but now it's time to jump in. Right, so where does our auto crafting journey begin? Well, basically, we use a mod called Refined Storage for our computer system. And within Refined Storage are a whole bunch of auto crafters. So a quick look in the quest book, and as you can see, it starts with patterns. Patterns are basically schematics that the computer uses to know what to build and how to build it. And we'll need a pattern grid, as well as crafters, iron crafters, gold crafters, diamond crafters, netherite crafters, and then finally creative crafters. And these are different tiers of crafters that do the job better, right? So where else to start but the beginning? Wait, what are these things? Advanced importers? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know what these are. Elite exporter. Ooh. ba buddy boop So let's start at the beginning and make a pattern and a pattern grid. Actually, so before we start, let's see how big a storage port we can make now. So in the background, I've been grinding all of the things required to make the ultimate infinite hard drive. And I think I might actually be close enough now. First up, though, we need to turn some quartz into some silicone quickly. There we go. So let's see if we can make a really high level storage part. We've got loads and loads of 1K storage parts, 1,200 apparently. So what are the bits and bobs that we're missing? It looks like we could use some more basic processors. Put these in the computer, they'll get smelted automatically. Okay, so here we go. We've got 300 1K storage parts left, 200 4Ks. We went through the chain until we finally got up to a 16 million storage disk, which is nuts. But anyway, this is empty now, and this is going to increase our capacity massively. We haven't got quite enough to make the infinite one, but because the 16 million is used three times to make the 65 million, the 65 million is used three times with vibranium to make the 262 million one. That is in turn used to make a thousand million with an unobtainium ingot, and then three of those make an infinite storage part. Now, the sheer number of items you need to make this is freaking insane. And this is, again, another perfect example of why we want to use refined storage to set up auto crafting. Because if we can auto craft these different stages of hard drives in the background, we can leave it to do its thing and hopefully come back in like a week and we'll have an infinite storage part. So I have the hard drive. What we need to do now is take one of these disk manipulators. I made one of these earlier, or two of them, it seems. And we're going to go upstairs and plug in this hard drive. Now we've got no space left to put in this hard drive. So what are we going to do? Some of these disks are tiny as well. And we want to take the items off of these disks and put them back into the system. So we're going to take out the smallest disks that we have, all of the 4K ones. So there's a 4K. There's a 4K. And uh, we'll also take out the 16K one because that's pretty tiny as well. We're going to put our 16 million one in here. And boom, holy crap, 2% full, insane. Now, how do we get the items that are stored so preciously on these hard drives back into our computer? Well, that's where the disk manipulator comes in. So we put down the disk manipulator. We'll put it on top of the controller like this. Should hook it up. And what you do is you put the hard drives that you want to inject back into your system on the left, like so. And you can see slowly that number is going down as these drives are emptied. When they get fully empty, it'll throw them in the out category over here. And uh, yeah, we'll have some empty drives. But the whole thing is going to take a long time. And we have a lot of precious items stored on this drive. So can we speed up this process? Well, I think we can actually. And there we go. 35 speed upgrades. And three stack upgrades. So let's see if this speeds up the disk manipulator. It should do. I've never used a disk manipulator before, but I think the theory sound right. One stack upgrade. Oh yeah, look at this. And now if I put more speed upgrades in there as well. Yeah, this hard drive is emptying super fast now. And before long, we'll have everything back in our system. Amazing. Boom, boom, boom. Oh man, so we've totally upgraded our computer setup now and we've learned how to use disk manipulators. Let's take a look now at auto crafting. 
And the crafter itself is pretty simple to make. Just some construction cores, quartz iron, all this good stuff that we, we have loads of just through using refined storage. Pretty cool. Bada boom, we have a crafter. Is that a quest? Did we get a quest done? Yeah, there we go. Auto crafting. Craft a crafter. Amazing. We're also going to make a crafter manager. So we'll need a couple of these. And also let's make a crafting monitor as well because I'm curious to see what it does. Oh, there we go. So, oh, right. So we had to make a pattern before we could get the crafter quest. Okay, cool. That makes a lot of sense. And now the crafting monitor, pretty simple. Boom. So we've got patterns, we've got crafters, we've got a crafter manager and a crafting monitor. Let's go and plug some of these in and see how it works. But we'll take some patterns with us just to get going. Ah, look, so it looks like all of these hard drives are now empty. Amazing. So we're just going to break this disk manipulator now and move some of these little bits and bobs around because we've got a lot of unused space in this room that I kind of want to get cracking with. So here we go, down goes the controller at the back of the room, and we're basically just going to move everything towards the back. And there we go, that's everything hooked up. Now we can move this item trash can because we basically set this up as a way to just remove stuff that we didn't need from the computer, but now we've got so much space, it doesn't really matter anymore. Okay, boom, so let's put some of these items down. We've got the crafter manager and the crafter monitor. So the manager is going to go there, and the monitor can go right next to it in the middle there. And so we'll plug one crafter in here, and so now the setup should be complete. So we have the crafter, which isn't making anything yet. We have the crafter manager that shows us what all our crafters are doing. And this is really important because you don't want to dupe something. You want to make sure you know what your crafters are crafting at all times. And we have a crafting monitor, uh, which I guess is kind of more important with bigger systems, I think, uh, but we'll find out what it does later on. Anyway, what we need now is one final piece that's missing from the puzzle, and that's a pattern grid, okay? We've got a grid, we've got a crafting grid, we've got a fluid grid, but what we don't have is a pattern grid. And these are pretty simple to make. We'll need a grid though, so we'll get one of those in the computer. And here we go, pattern grid coming right up. Now I'm also going to borrow some dye from the computer because I want these things to look pretty cool. So if blue is what we're using for our crafting stuff, in fact let me change this back from purple, it's a cool look but I prefer blue. So blue is items, yellow is liquids, and red is crafting. I think that should work, let's try it. So red. Oh yeah, look at this, very nice. So down goes the pattern grid, boom. And of course we'll keep it on brand and make it red. Very cool. So here we go, the pattern grid. Basically this gives us access to everything that's in our computer. We put a pattern here on the left and then we put all of the patterns that we have on the right and it will create a pattern out of these things. Now the whole reason we set up auto crafting in the first place was to get our farms to work. So let's start by putting down the recipes that we need to make the seeds. And that's going to be pineapples. One pineapple makes one seed. Boom! We have a pineapple pattern. So what other crops do we have? I remember grapes. Boom. And we'll go both purple and green. And so there you go, there are four patterns for us to get going with. Pineapple, grape, green grape, and okra. And if you ever get confused about which pattern is which, you can hold down shift, and it shows you exactly what the pattern is. Pretty cool, huh? So let's load up this crafter. There we go, okra, inputs one okra, outputs one okra seed. So this is all well and good. We've got the recipes in this crafter. We've got the crafter manager that shows us this crafter and all the recipes. The red crafting monitor, which I think monitors ongoing crafts, but there's none going on. And we have the pattern grid. But the problem is, 
if we go here to okra and we want the seed, we have to actually click craft for it to do the crafting for us. And it's not an instant thing. We can just say, make me 10, start, and it begins to craft when we press go. And if we click on the crafting monitor, that shows the process in action. So our goal eventually is to get this thing full with loads and loads of different crafts happening in the background. So how do we make the system automatically craft things? So the way to get this to happen automatically is to use something called a crafting upgrade. Basically, if the computer knows how to make okra seeds and something in the network asks for okra seeds, if it has a crafting upgrade, it will automatically craft the desired item. So let's plug the crafting upgrade into one of our sewers to see if this works. So first up, we have the plant sewer that's dealing with corn. And this plant sewer doesn't need anything from us because when the harvester gathers the corn, it automatically gets corn seeds and corn. Unfortunately, okra seeds don't quite work in the same way. The plant makes okra and then you can choose to turn that okra into seeds. We're going to put a crafting upgrade in the exporter. There we go. And now our computer system should make okra seeds whenever this machine wants them. Aha, yeah, as we can see, the seeds are being planted because it's asking the computer to make the seeds so that it can work. Oh, that's amazing. So all we need is just loads and loads of these crafting upgrades. And that is super duper simple. Now we have to remember bell pepper, coffee, and this one over here, chickpea, are the ones that we don't have recipes for. So bell pepper, coffee, and chickpea. So a bell pepper in here. The recipe for bell peppers, boom. Chickpea in here, makes you a chickpea seed. And of course, coffee. Now if we put these into the crafter as well, we've got the chickpea, the bell pepper, and the coffee beans. If we take a swoop down to the farm now, what we should see is a whole bunch of fields fully stocked. Oh yeah, but a boom, but a bing, the whole thing works. The machine works, the system is flawless, amazing. That is absolutely perfect. So all we need to do now is choose the different types of fruit and vegetables to go in our different plots, set up crafters for each different one of them, and we should have a whole range of fruits and vegetables at our disposal to cook with. Oh man, that's amazing. So let's see what else we can do with these crafters. Now we have a regular crafter, but this mod pack looks like it has some custom crafters that have even more capacity. Here we go. This is from Extra Storage, which looks like it's a mod that just expands refined storage for bigger mod packs. So let's see, blocks of iron, improved processors and crafters. We can definitely make these. Boom, iron crafters. Now, what is an iron crafter and how does it compare to a different craft? Ooh, check that out. Do we get like a, a cool quest reward for this? Eh, just some patterns. Well, it's better than nothing, I suppose. All right, all right. So let's put this down and see how it compares to a regular crafter. Boom. And we'll make it red as well, because, you know, oh, we can't. You can't make an iron crafter red. That sucks. Aha, now check this out. Whoa, Nelly. So check this out. This has got three times the capacity that our regular crafter has. So let's see how high we can go. Okay, now things are getting very, very spicy. We need blocks of gold and neural processors to make the gold crafter. And a neural processor is pretty nuts. It's like diamond, gold, quartz, obsidian, whoa. Boom, a gold crafter, but that's all we can afford is one. And now this is used again to make, whoa, the diamond crafter. Bada bing, bada boom, we need some blocks of diamonds, but that should be no sweat since we have like oodles of diamonds. Not a huge amount though. 1,000 seems like a lot of diamonds, but that will quickly run out if you're not careful. Bada boom, bada bing, a diamond crafter, but 
A diamond crafter is then used to make a netherite crafter. Now, can we make this? I think we can, you know. We've got lots and lots of netherite, thanks to our bees. One, two, three, four. But a boom, but a bing, a netherite crafter. Oh my god. Ooh! Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. So the next step is a creative crafter. However, that's probably going to be a bit outside of our range. It would be our first creative... Um, it would be our first creative item, though, wouldn't it? Withering processor is... Wait, hang on. I think we can do this. I've got loads of nether stars. Withering processors. Boom. Creative exporter. Whoa. Here we go. Creative crafter. So I just need to burn up these uh, withering processors. And I think... Oh my god, hot diggity damn! We just got our first creative item! The Creative Crafter! Holy crap! We just literally went from zero to mother frickin' hero. Let's put this down and see what this baby bad boy can do. Hoo-hoo! Now I'm not sure we're gonna need any more crafters if we put this down. Boom. Whoa, look at this beast! Right click and wait, what? I was expecting like a million capacity. Now, this is a lot of crafting recipes, don't get me wrong. But, oh man, I was expecting it to be more like have like a scroll bar or something. Whew. But I'm not gonna lie, I bet this thing crafts stuff crazy quick. Let's take a look in the quest book. Oh yeah, look at these quest rewards. Nice. 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 Ooh. Nice. Ooh. Improved processes, damn. Well, thank you for watching Modded Minecraft Feed the Bees, and today we did something insane. We made our first creative item. It's nuts. We didn't even need an all the mod uh, star, only some unobtainium. So it was very achievable. But now we have a creative crafting interface and the ability to auto craft on demand, which is going to make things so much simpler in a lot of ways. For one, we can start processing honeycomb blocks instead of individual honeycombs, and that might speed things up massively. As always though, let me know in the comments section if you have any ideas for how we can use automated crafting to speed things up here on the farm, because I'm sure there's a ton of insane ideas that are just going straight over my head right now. Thank you for watching. As always, a huge thank you to all of you guys that are channel members, and everybody that's subscribed and leaves a comment or even a like. I'm going to finish setting up the farm, get some crafters in position so we're getting all of those fruits and vegetables on the reg automatically. Until next time though, take care.